Takuyapi Frank Juan Amachapelo. My name is Frank Juan. I am AC Chungru Lakota. Hello, my name is Bethany Yellowtail. I'm 26 years old and I'm a fashion designer from the Crow and Northern Cheyenne Nations in southern Montana. My name is Vera Bauer Palmer and I am Tuscarora Skaruda from the Six Nations Reserve in what we call Canada. Hello, my name is Zach Cooper. Um, I'm 20 years old and I'm a student here at Dartmouth College. Um, I identify with my Muscogee Creek Nation, Navajo Nation, and Hopi tribes. My name's Christine and I'm half White Mountain Apache and half Hopi. I was born and raised on the Fort Apache Indian Reservation and I lived there for 18 years before going to college. I didn't really think too much about mental health. I was good at sweeping things under the rug and um, not really talking about my emotions with anyone. Um, I kind of just uh, did my work, produced a lot of stuff, uh, and didn't really worry about how everything was making me feel on the inside. I lost my older brother. He uh, passed away in a car accident. and. Uh, that really uh, hit our family hard. You know, I knew I had to make a change. I, mean, I, I knew this because it's like fall term 2013 and I missed like three weeks of classes. And you know, at that point, like I just knew I had to do something about it. I have uh, struggled with anxiety and depression uh, since I was a freshman at Dartmouth. The transition from high school and from my very loving community back home to place where there's not many native people and moving from one place to another place just really wrecked um, with my mental health. I uh, tried to carry on like everything was all right. I held a lot of this stuff in, a lot of that questioning, wondering, feeling sad, angry. I wanted to put on a facade. I wanted to make everyone feel like I was fine. I was okay. I wanted to make it feel as though my mother didn't have to worry about me. She already lost one son, she didn't have to worry about this one. I was kind of a angry person, I guess, when it came to like uh, activism. Um, I was really into activism and so a lot of that and uh, a lot of, of how I was raised dealt with being a warrior, I guess. And so in, so in doing that, I was always the strong person. I never knew what it meant to be weak. My mom was a strong Tuscarora woman. I was always aware of the scars that her life carried, the shame that was instilled in her during those years of boarding school. So I basically took time off, it's called a medical withdrawal, and uh, so I ended up being off for like almost a year and a half. And I think my family, it was difficult for them to understand it. Um, you know, they're supportive, but it just, it doesn't sound good, like having to go away from college for like a long time. And it kind of like almost seems selfish in some ways um, because a lot of people don't have, you know, this opportunity to go to Dartmouth. And I just felt like, okay, I just have to like take a break, focus on mental health. I started seeing a counselor for a couple of years. And again, I never really told my parents or my family, but I sought the help that I needed. And it was the hardest thing I've ever had to do because as an Apache woman, I'm not supposed to ask for help. Reach out as much as you can, which I know is very difficult, but it happens in steps. You know, first I came to terms with it in, within myself, like, okay, I have a disease. I'm gonna learn how to live with this. And over time that got easier and easier. Forgiveness. I worked for years to achieve it, and I'm still working. But forgiveness is a tough one for me. And, and yet I know it's the key to my own spiritual and spirit li liberation. I, I get to do what I love. I get to follow my passion. I make a career out of it. And I, you know, I travel all over the world now performing. And I think back and it almost didn't happen. I almost wasn't sitting here. I almost wasted this gift that I have of, li of, of this life. You know, you only get it once and I, I know what it feels like to take it before it's your time. And I wish I can tell you how that made me feel. 
All I can tell you is that don't waste that gift of life. Don't, don't waste it. And it took me going back to our culture and our ceremonies for me to figure that out. I'm not supposed to rely on other people to bring me through watching friends take their lives or seeing family members choose drugs and alcohol over a relationship with me or their own kids. And to see that and to be able to come to terms with it talking to a complete stranger, it was a little weird for me, but it was helpful in ways that I never could have imagined. Connecting back with my culture, connecting back with my identity, because that is what makes me who I am. I think forgiveness is something that is so incredibly important. We can't move forward individually or as a people, as Indian people, until we can forgive. But part of that forgiveness is a vision for the future beyond the pain, beyond the, the, um, the trauma. I'm here to tell you if nobody's told you that you're important. Your stories and your perspectives on life are important. We all we all are here for a reason. Don't don't listen to what society tells us about ourselves. You know, you are important and you do have a meaning here and you do have a gift. Mine was music. Find whatever your gift is and share it with people because I almost wasted mine. And this life is a gift. So do what you love and, and realize that you're important and you deserve to be happy, healthy, respected, and loved. I think it does get better and it does get brighter, but it comes very slowly and it comes through a lot of self-reflection and through coming close to your community and to getting back to your roots. It, it all relies upon a good inner self-worth and knowing that you are valued and that you are loved. All things do get better in time. They may not be healed, they may not be perfect, it may not be fixed per se, but it will get better. As hard as it is to remember when you're going through things, it will get brighter.